Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. Voluntary Employees Beneficiary Association Plan, otherwise known as a VEBA, a VEBA, prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Insurance is part of our long-term risk mitigation strategy where we follow the adage of measure twice, cut once, put in a formal process in place, look in something like setting the goals, develop a plan to reach them, put the plan in action, review the results, and repeat the process periodically. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia, Voluntary Employees Beneficiary Association Plan, a VEBA, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research search from there. This is by uh, Adam Baron, updated March 9th, 2022. In prior presentations, we've been talking about insurance in general. We then went into the health insurance and different kinds of health insurance and then to long-term care. And now we're thinking about the VEBA in association in conjunction with those topics. So what is a Voluntary Employees Beneficiary Association plan, you might ask? A VEBA? A Voluntary Employees Beneficiary Association plan, a VEBA plan, is a type of tax-exempt trust used by its members and eligible dependents to pay for eligible medical expenses. The plan is typically funded by an employer, so this is another kind of situations as we've seen with many of the health care uh, information that oftentimes is tied with an employer-employee type of relationship, possibly resulting in a benefit due to the fact that if an employer can give some benefits to the employee, which isn't simply uh, income or wages, they could be exempt for taxes, for example. That would, of course, be a benefit to both the employer and the employee because that could mean that the money that is being received is going further, therefore being worth more, in essence being paid more by basically trying to get elimination of the taxes if possible. So while the popularity of VEBAs was, uh, has waned, there are companies that continue to offer them. Employee contributions may or may not be mandatory depending on the company plan, although individual elections are not permitted. However, employees must be covered by an employer-sponsored health plan to be eligible for a VEBA membership. Additionally, the company must observe rules established by the Internal Revenue Service, that's the IRS, of course, for creating and maintaining a VEBA, because obviously part of the reason that you might be doing it, if you were to do it, would possibly be to get some tax benefit from it. So how VEBA plans work? VEBAs allow employers to provide benefits to employees on the condition that they follow certain guidelines. For instance, VEBA rules state that employers must first obtain a letter of determination from the IRS for their plan to be considered a VEBA for federal income tax purposes. VEBAs are subject to some aspects of the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, that's the ERISA, however, they are not considered to be qualified retirement plans. Beneficiaries must be employees, their dependents, or their designated beneficiaries. VEBA plans are considered to be welfare benefit plans under federal tax law and are tax uh, exempt under Section 501c9 of the Internal Revenue Code. Employer contributions made to a VEBA plan are tax deductible and have no limit. Funds in a VEBA grow tax-free and there are no tax penalties levied upon employees or VEBA members who take distributions from a VEBA for qualified medical expenses, which could be nice, which often includes co-pays, insurance, and deductibles as well as dental and vision payments. These expenses are defined in Section uh, 213D of the Internal Revenue Code. So if you want to take a look at uh, some of that information, one of the places to go would be obviously the IRS website to dig it in a little bit deeper in more detail on that side, which you could find by going to irs.gov, irs.gov. Members can also use VEBA plans to fund post-retirement health insurance uh, premiums. Even though these accounts are usually used as savings vehicles to fund health care expenses in retirement, employees can use money from their VEBAs to pay for qualified medical expenses while working. 
if account holders don't use the money in their VEBA plans for a given year, then that amount rolls over to the next year's balance. That means a, VB, a VEBA is not a use it or lose it plan, uh, unlike a flexible spending account. So we talked about a flexible spending account where you're basically more uh, confined. You have similar kind of idea that you're trying to get a tax benefit from it but uh, it's more that uh, that you got to use it or lose it kind of activity where here you got that rollover kind of benefit which is nice because you know that's good for your planning and possibly more for the long-term planning you don't have to be uh, as specific possibly as uh, if you're going to lose the benefits over a certain time period if not used special considerations a veba can also act as a type of health reimbursement arrangement an hra a post deductible veba for example is designed to reimburse vision and dental expenses until a member meets their health plan deductible so now you've got this reimbursement component which you can compare to a similar uh, component of an HRA, which we talked about in prior presentations. After the deductible is met, members can be reimbursed for non-health uh, plan-related medical expenses. Limited VEBA, however, uh, can reimburse only medical and vision expenses. Meanwhile, money in a post-employment VEBA can be used only after an individual has retired or left employment with VEBA's sponsor. When a VEBA plan is paired with a health savings account, that's the HSA, which we talked about in prior presentations, VEBA dollars will be limited towards eligible dental and vision expenses until individuals meet their medical health plan deductibles. What's a VEBA? A Voluntary Employees Beneficiary Association plan uh, is a type of tax-exempt trust that employers can offer to help employees with the cost of medical care. These plans are typically funded by the employer and governed under Internal Revenue Code Section 501c9, who is eligible for a VEBA. To be eligible for a VEBA plan, your employer must offer one. So obviously this is something that uh, you would expect or possibly could be if you're subject to uh, from your employer so you'd be checking with your employer about it and possibly digging in more detail about it from there if offered also you must be an active employee and be covered by your employer's health insurance plan to participate in a veba is a veba and hra health reimbursement arrangements hras allow employers to reimburse employees for certain medical expenses employees can roll over contributions year to year while investing contributions for growth under the definition a veba can be considered a type of hra what is the difference between a veba and an, and an hsa health savings accounts which we talked about in prior presentations allow you to save for qualified medical expenses on tax advantaged basis these accounts are associated with high deductible health plans so again we looked at these in, in prior presentations about the different types of health care plans you might have and the high deductible plans are usually kind of the cheaper plans because they have the high deductibles but they could be good for certain needs and then you've got the congress you know you've got the litigation or the law that tries to incentivize or still give benefits to people that have the high deductible plans possibly to try to help them to do more of the preventative uh, stuff and so then you, you, you that's kind of where the hsas fit in you could take a look at prior presentations for more detail the main difference between veba and an hsa is how they're funded vebas are funded only by the employer uh, in most cases, while well, HSAs can be funded with employer and employee contributions. Can I have a VEBA and an HSA? We're getting greedy here. Can I put them, can I get, I want all of the, these health, uh, these health words that we have here. Yes, depending on the options offered by your employer, it is possible to have both a VEBA and an HSA. If you have both, it's important to understand the rules for contributions, withdrawals, and taxations to ensure that you're making the most of these benefits. Which again, that's that's important because <laughs> they can be confusing, all these different acronyms. So you want to check out what's available to you, do your comparison and, and contrasting. Take a look at uh, the references on Investopedia. You can continue your research uh, from there as you're looking into these topics.